everybody, welcome to The Daily Dose. This week, we are asking the question, what does God see when God sees us? We say all the time that God is everywhere. God is in all things, but we are human. So it's natural for us to wonder from time to time, is God really there? We ask, where is God when I'm feeling lonely, when I'm struggling? Or on the other side of those struggles, what does God see in me? So this week, we're exploring what God sees when God sees us. Last week, I had the opportunity to go on vacation with my family. So we were with my parents, the four of us in our family, and my sister's family. And we spent a great week spending a ton of time together. And there was one thing that all of us noticed. See, my sister has an infant and a three-year-old. Our kids are 10 and 13. And I had forgotten how many questions toddlers ask. If you have kids, you probably remember this phase. Question after question after question from your three-year-old, your four-year-old. Where are you going? Can I go? Where is my mommy? When do I, why do I need to wear shoes? What are you doing? Why? And on that first day when we were outside with my niece, she and I were walking around this house that we had rented and we saw neighbors outside in the house next door. And she asked me, who is that? And I kind of smiled at her and said, we don't know who those are. Those are our nice neighbors. And she paused, she kind of looked to the side. I could see her wheels spinning and she said, well, is it Angie? See, my sister has never, my sister's daughter, my niece has never met Pastor Angie, but she knows because she watches church online that I work with Angie. So it made all this sense in the world that it w had to have been Angie who was in this house next to us. And I, I laughed at this and I just said, no, that's not Angie. Angie lives in Alexandria. And I bet you could guess what her next question was. Why? all of these questions. They go on and on and on with these toddlers. And adults, we may not ask the same types of questions in the same way. We might be satisfied if we ask, who is that person? And this other person with us replies, I don't know. But there are some questions that we could ask again and again, right? Some things we just can't let go. Some things we shouldn't let go. I just finished listening to a book that was set in World War II, and the characters in this book asked again and again, why would Hitler do these things in Europe? I'm sure millions of people across Europe at that time in history asked the same questions. We find ourselves asking, why, God, could such things happen? God, when there is suffering, when I am struggling, why? Well, today I want to tell you about a prophet in the Bible who asked just these questions. A prophet, a book in the Bible, we sometimes call Habakkuk, or as it's pronounced by some, Habakkuk. A book in the Bible that's only three chapters long. You can look it up. It's in the Old Testament. Three chapters of a conversation between a prophet and God. A book in the Bible that in this particular translation starts out with the heading, The Prophet's Complaint. Habakkuk says, Oh God, how long shall I cry for help and you will not listen? Or cry to you, violence and you not save? Why do you make me see wrongdoing and look at trouble? A prophet who looks at the world around him, who sees all of this injustice and says, why, why, why? The book of Habakkuk shows us this conversation between a prophet and God, who is a, this prophet who is asking all of these questions. He is that toddler saying, why? What did God see in this prophet? Well, God saw a human understandably frustrated. Seeing all these wars happening, seeing injustices happening from these larger powers, from these systems that were oppressing people. And God sees the wariness of Habakkuk. God sees, yes, there are woes in this world. If you look at the next chapter, you'll see that God is responding and saying uh, and explaining a little bit of what God sees and explaining a little bit of the justice that will come. Pick it up and read this chapter sometime, these three chapters, and you'll see that God talks about a future for God's people, a future that's even among some of those people 
who are causing those injustices at that time, a future that does overcome the injustice. And then the prophet comes back and ends with a prayer. A prophet who says, O Lord, I have heard of your renown and I stand in awe, O Lord, of your work. In, your own, in our own time, revive it. In our own time, make it known. In wrath, may you remember mercy. A prophet who prays that even in the midst of these times, there might be hope, there might be joy. And in our times, we can look back and know that just as God saw this prophet asking those questions, that God sees us, that God works in the midst of our struggles, and that just as God saw this prophet, God sees you. And maybe in the same ways we will say, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will exult in the God of my salvation. God the Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He makes me tread upon the heights. Thanks so much for tuning in to The Daily Dose this week. If you missed earlier parts of The Daily Dose, you can certainly go back, watch anytime on YouTube or visit our website. And we'd love for you to invite someone else to tune in with you next week. Thanks so much. Have a good night.